I've done a lot of work with Raspberry Pis and Wi-Fi 7 and Wi-Fi 6E and all these different Wi-Fi generations just trying to get things working. And uh, somebody reached out from a company that makes the WLAN Pi, which is this guy. But we're going to talk more about the WLAN Pi Go because it's a tool that I think you have worked with some mm -hmm. of these kind of tools in the past. And um, it's important to state right away that they cost a lot of money. A lot of money. And some things when they cost a lot of money, they're worth it, right? And these guys, like the, the, the Go part, so these guys here, that guy's 550 bucks. Solid as heck, it feels great. This one is very light, but solid, and it is $999. <laughs> it's basically a spectrum analyzer from two to- Two to seven Seven gigahertz. gigs, yeah. yeah. So that's a lot to get in a little package. So when you're out on the road and you wanna put this thing together and they make that package happen like that and a single cable in, that's just a dream, right? And uh, the way that this works is pretty interesting. I'll actually get to a teardown to show what's inside in a bit. Um, but can you show me how, how this, like you plugged it in, but what is it going to do? Does it just bring up something on your phone? Well, you, you download apps, right? So they have apps for this. I have three that do pretty much everything I would ever want to do with Wi-Fi. Probably, probably more so than you'd ever do. More than one. The, the information is unbelievable. It's endless. Uh, so, you, but you can go in, you could take it and... Uh, sniff out uh, Wi-Fi locations. It's got a direction finder. It's a find my type feature, which is really cool. And it has a beeping feature too. Beeping, the beep, 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 you hit the gold mine and it goes to a solid tone. It, it is pretty good and it works really well. And then uh, the other thing you can sort out like what networks are busy in this area, what, you know, it's kind of helps what you. Channels to, what, what channels are free, what channels are free. Overloaded. You get a spectrum analyzer. It does pretty much everything. And if you have that, I forget the name of the app, but it, it'll like map your place, your signal strength through your uh, building. So, but that when, that's a Mac app, right? That is a that's an that's an app or an online thing. I don't I don't yeah. remember because I'm not in that in, you know industry to do it. But if you're uh, you were doing it for professionally, you get why the cost, convenience, all that kind of stuff. So, so the first app I see is Wi-Fi Explorer, and this yeah. is not on the App Store yet, but I think it might yeah. be coming at that's, some point. Yeah, that's like right. We have a test flight yeah. version of it. Yes, we do. And uh, this is my favorite piece of it because it's more in my wheelhouse of what I've had to do. So you pick your sensor, which is the uh, go, the WLAN, the w -LAN go. yep. And then you scan, you do a scan and it scans. You can choose the band you want to scan, 2.4, 5, or 6. Or all of them. Or all of them, which I'm doing all of them here. And then you start to see them populate. And if you want to, you can pick a band. Uh, and I always like to make a note, like what band is it, band 36, uh, you know, so you could see it. And then when you see the band, you have choice. You can go in and you can actually uh, make your list by signal strength, by the number of stations they have, or by channel utilization. Sometimes you do want to know that if you're in a crowded area. So then you can select a channel. And then it's got that Find My feature. It was like, it was one of the number ones. And I, I remember back when Wi-Fi first came out, CBS had a guy who would travel around to visit stations and he carried this little cheap thing that would detect RF at 2.4 gigahertz to try to find them, right? But this one literally comes up, uh, it locks in, it tells you the signal, you can turn the sound on or off, and you can walk, and it gets, beep gets faster and faster as you walk near it, and then it get, becomes a tone. So that's a great feature. And there it is. Yeah. There you are. You and I yeah, so it, it, like for every SSID, you can get every little bit of information yes. through the radio. And then there, you can also do a spectrum analyzer and see the waterfall too for the whole band. Right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, this particular app just has a mini version of that without much detail. Uh, there's another app, uh, Chanlight, and Chanlight gives you a nice, you can see the display. It, it identifies the local networks, uh, their band that they're taking up and you can watch them get busier and quieter as, uh, as the day goes on or whatever. And you can change it, look at each band, uh, it, and you get a waterfall display. So what's, what's to, not to like? Yeah. So. Yeah, so that, and that, that app is relatively simple, but you can also narrow down to like just the 2.4, 5 yes. or 6 gigahertz. You yep. can change your time horizon. Yep. You can also um, just focus on one channel at a time. Right, and you can change from the waterfall area. You can make it show you the radios or the channels, depending on how you're looking for stuff at the venue or wherever you're at. I know that you've used Wireshark in the past mm -hmm. on your wired networks, but yeah. apparently you can also do it through yeah. here. Yeah, so there's an app, uh, Air Tool Pi. And you can kick that, you choose the sensor, the wipe, the uh, land, but then you want to know your channel you're looking at. You're looking at a specific channel, 
uh, to to uh, and you got to know the channel width also because you got choices there. So you've already investigated. You found a channel of interest, um, and and you know the bandwidth. You come here and then you just the simple capture button, and it'll connect and it'll just start capturing data as long as you let it capture and you hit the stop button. You get a file that you can text yourself or transfer it whatever way you have with the uh, normal ways we transfer. And then uh, you can up the, open that on uh, Wireshark, yeah, or some other program that would read the PCAP or whatever. Yeah, those it's files a PCAP are. file, I think. Yeah. So for some networks, you can find a lot of information. For other networks, it's better security, better yes. encryption. But yeah. part of the point of that is, if you have people like in your business that are running their own little rogue Wi-Fi networks, right? You could be giving direct access into your network yes. wirelessly yes. to somebody sitting in the parking lot. So. Yes. Yeah. So you can use these. I can't think of anything you couldn't do with uh, Wi-Fi access. And I told you, I was the frequency coordinator a couple of times at NFL football games. And we had like $10,000 worth of receiving equipment and stuff up there. But Wi-Fi was not really a factor back, you know, that was probably, what, 20 years ago? Yeah. When we actually had the Rams. <laughs> uh, but anyway, the, uh, the, the ability to get a report of something happening, use your tools to find out what it is, uh, you needed you need certain tools. So this kind of thing is like that kind of professional packaging. This is excellent. And we'll get to a couple of the real world scenarios that we were testing. But before that, I also wanted to take this apart and see what makes it tick. And this was the reason why the WLAN Pi guys reached out to me. It's actually running a Raspberry Pi inside mm -hmm. of there. Yes. And you're thinking like, how does a Raspberry Pi, like is a battery? There's no battery in there. It runs completely off the iPhone's port. So the, the mm -hmm. port, the USB-C port can provide enough power to run a Raspberry Pi with a Wi-Fi 7 Intel BE200 radio and with an external Osseum, uh, the, you know, the Spectrum Analyzer connected to it as well. Mm -hmm. All that power goes through that plug and apparently it has enough bandwidth uh, and enough power for all that over mm -hmm. that USB OTG connection. Yeah. So I took it apart and um, you can see that there's the there's on top there's the Wi-Fi chip and it has two antennas that are kind of stuck on the sides of the case, and I don't know exactly how they are getting the signal through because the case is metal. <laughs> yeah, I know. But uh, yeah, you know there's Wi-Fi is RF is always magic, so maybe mm -hmm. there's a little magic going on in there. Uh, and then they have a couple magnets that hold the uh, the the spectrum analyzer on the back, and then a big magnet ring that holds it to MagSafe phones, so like the iPhone. And then uh, underneath the PCB, there's the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. So I think if they did a Compute Module 5, it might not have enough power to drive that because mm. that requires 2 to 5 watts and what's plus the gain, more. Right? What's yeah, the gain from that? If so. a Pi CM4 does enough, then that's great. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, it's running a little Linux computer inside of the box that does the spectrum analysis. It sends the data back. It gets the Wi-Fi channel information and all mm -hmm. that. And I think the magic here... The thing that uh, makes it really cool and something that kind of builds on the hardware work that I did and the driver work, testing it and all that, is they have all the software that translates the Wi-Fi stuff through Linux into the displays that you get in all mm -hmm. the apps. So part of the reason why it costs so much, like you could buy a Raspberry Pi, you could buy a, a Wi-Fi 7 chip, probably all for, you know, 100 bucks, 200 bucks or whatever. Mm -hmm. But integrating it all into a package that you can slap on your phone take with you with software that just works out of the box. Yeah. That's the magic there. Yeah, it definitely is the magic. And, uh, you know, for most of us, are we going to pay 500 bucks for this thing? No. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's a certain number of people who this is like a godsend to them mm -hmm. to be able to stick this onto the back of their phone and walk around instead of having a laptop in their hand. Mm -hmm. Or like you said, the little rack of, of stuff. The, the one thing about the build quality that I was a little iffy about, which I don't know, this might have been an early unit, or I, I'm not sure, but when I took it off, the uh, thermal compound was kind of just like little dots mm -hmm. here and there, and they weren't making much contact. So I actually took that off and put on some of these thermal pads, mm -hmm. and I, I cut to size the right thicknesses to make sure that everything made full contact. The temperatures didn't seem too crazy, and a Compute mm -hmm. Module 4 doesn't get too hot anyway. But I just like having it, if you're going to put a heat sink on mm -hmm. the case, make the heat sink have good contact. You know, that's, that's yeah. my philosophy there. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I did fix that. But again, I don't know if that's the actual uh, production version or if mm -hmm. these were a couple like yeah, earlier Yeah, there's no units. fan or anything on this guy. Yeah, it's so all he... passively cooled. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a neat little box. Last month, you and I went to a blues game and mm -hmm. got to go behind the scenes and see a lot of the work that they do in the production truck. But yep. another 
little side goal is to see like in a crowded environment like that, mm -hmm. uh, how is the Wi-Fi? So we brought it along to the Enterprise Center. We weren't really looking for anything in particular, but you did see, you know, we saw the, the building's Wi-Fi and mm -hmm. we saw a couple of Wi-Fi networks, mm -hmm. uh, but it was less crowded than we, I think we yeah. expected. Yep. But it was also right after the end of the game. So right, right. The game was yeah. over. People are heading to the exits. Uh, the crew's starting to shut down everything. Uh, probably pretty quiet time on there. And uh, and I didn't know about the uh, flip tool either. The find yeah, that would have been fun that would have been do. fun to just find where the access points were. One other place that I took it in the real world, which was probably a little bit more dense, was Supercomputing 25. I went mm -hmm. to the conference for a few days and walked the show floor, and actually talked to Cynet, the, the little like in-conference in network, because this mm -hmm. is for supercomputing, yeah. high-performance computing. So they built their own infrastructure. They had fiber runs all over the place. They had fiber out to each. Uh, they, had, they had tons of Aruba networking gear and Aruba APs, and each one of them had a fiber line out to a PoE switch near sets of two or three of these, and they'd put them up. So they had their own entire Wi-Fi network, a very nice enterprise-quality mm -hmm. one. And some of these enterprise ones even have their own tooling built into them, but nothing beats having a thing in your hand mm -hmm. that you can walk around. And I did walk around. I found a ton of activity. Mm, and interesting. The, the admins there were saying that they actually had some trouble because booths would bring their own Wi-Fi hotspots. Mm -hmm. And when you have like 20 booths that do that, yeah. spread out over a large area, not a big yeah. deal. But if you have <laughs> 500 booths doing yeah, that, right. and they're all in the 5 gigahertz band, yeah. or even worse, in the 2.4, it's, it's crazy. And... Um, the funny thing was, when I was walking around, I noticed that there were tons and tons of Roku networks, mm. probably like 100 plus. Mm -hmm. And Let's I realized turn that on by default. Yeah, yeah, I realized that all these IoT de device vendors are putting like the TVs, every yeah. single one of them. You turn on the TV out of the box, boom, Wi-Fi hotspot. Mm -hmm. Like that mm -hmm. seems like a bad idea on many levels, but. Mm -hmm. I guess the, the takeaway there for me is that um, it's not only my dishwasher that's ruining my life with <laughs> IoT, Wi-Fi stuff. It's also TVs apparently nowadays. Yeah. yeah. So I think t I, I think any device should have its Wi-Fi disabled by default. Right. And then there should be a thing like, would you like to enable the hotspot? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. it is convenient for setup, but it's also inconvenient yeah. to have 500 Wi-Fi hotspots in your right. house because you bought something. And I remember as a kid, you know, you did that frequency coordination. Wi-Fi probably wasn't as big of an issue, but like what, what frequencies did you deal with and what was your role and responsibility? Well, uh, so at the NFL games, which I was like the third engineer down the list, I subbed there and so you had to understand what you were doing. So you got, there's, they were all wireless systems that did the cheerleaders, coach to quarterback, uh, all the NFL, you know, any frequency that went on, you had to be able to tune in at a report of a problem. You'd tune into that channel, decode what you could. And by the way, the coach of quarterbacks, you could not decode it. You would hear this duck talking of this Motorola scrambling system there. But, uh, but at the time, but you had to have a, the tools there to do that, and they weren't cheap. You know, so uh, this is reminiscent of that. And today, Wi-Fi would be one of the items that you'd want to keep a close eye on, as well as the coach to quarterback, because that's keep those helmets charged and uh, all is well usually, but uh, when they're not, you got to be able to find, zone in, uh, tune in, and, and help alleviate whatever problem that is because the game goes on whether or not the the whole thing and the cheerleaders don't know where to go, heaven forbid that. But yeah. and it, well, I, I would guess too that even, even professional equipment now is tied through Wi-Fi. Fly up a DJI drone. They use Wi-Fi to communicate that video back. So you're, you've got a, a what it would be a rogue network using up a lot of bandwidth the whole time uh, as you turn on 20 drones at a drone contest. You know, like yeah. those are kind of things you don't think about until you have the problem. So. Yeah. And then when you're at an NFL game, it's like, oh, the halftime show. Oops, they yeah. have 300 drones and <laughs> yeah. they just turn them all on. Yeah. You know, things like that. Yeah. It's, it's always nice to be able to, to debug and diagnose that mm -hmm. stuff. And one other thing you were asking what this is. Is yes. it like a blade antenna? It looks kind of like that, but this is the hint does that look like yeah, any? It looks like a it looks a charging antenna. No. <laughs> well, it, it looks like the uh, MagSafe connection. Mm -hmm. So one thing is that the iPad doesn't support MagSafe out of the box. So they actually designed this that you can buy. This as an adapter for iPads. So you can do this like that, and then uh, you know, yeah. unplug that. Yeah. And you can put this on the back of an iPad. So the iPad has a larger screen mm -hmm. with uh, with more surface area for you to look at. Uh, when you're hmm. doing your chan light and all that kind of stuff, so yeah. just a, a neat little box. I think it. I think it's it's meant to go just that way. Mm -hmm. So 
Anyway, that's uh, a neat little that accessory. Is... I kind of want that for other things too. You know, you yeah. could you could do MagSafe. <laughs> I could put my wallet on here too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. But uh, but that's that's another accessory that they make. They also, uh, like I mentioned, they make this WLAN Pi. Is it the M4 Plus? I M4 think this Plus, is, yeah. which has this cute little little knob. Yeah, I've never yeah. seen something like that on a Pi, but it's uh, like a little joystick that you can use with a screen. This one I think is made more for like remote installations. I noticed it has a tripod mount here. Mm -hmm. uh, so you could put it somewhere, uh, mount it somewhere on a wall or whatever, mm -hmm. and you can remotely administer it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, again, 600 bucks, mm -hmm. but you're not just paying for the, the Pi and the Wi-Fi 7 right. and the connectivity and all that yeah. stuff. You're paying for the whole package. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, I, I'm not covering this one today, but just wanted to let you know that it exists as mm -hmm. well. If yeah, you're Wi-Fi Pro more. looking for something, um, yeah. and it runs a forked version of Raspberry Pi OS with all the Wi-Fi tools built mm -hmm. in. So um, anyway, all this stuff is at wlandpi.com, and we'd mm -hmm. like to thank them for sending it over for testing. Definitely. Yeah, it's just it's it's one of those cool tools that we probably wouldn't be in the market for it. I know I'm not, yeah. but yeah. I like to see that it exists, and I like to make sure that people know like this yeah. is an option out there. Yeah, yeah, they definitely have the desire to have it, and then you you go and say, well, how could I do that for two hundred dollars or one hundred and fifty dollars? <laughs> yeah, for me, it's usually <laughs> like I see this, and I'm like, okay, I know all the tools, and I know the software side. And I could hack something together for yeah. a specific use case, but yeah. Yeah. if if you know, I'm not going to ship that to somebody and say, "Here's no. my product." No, like this is a product. I would take, I would take the uh, hard hat with the antenna at the top <laughs> and the battery on the back, and you know, I'd yep. go from there. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So so anyway, wlandpie.com. Thanks to them for sending these over. I'm going to mark the video as sponsored. They didn't pay us anything for this, but they did provide us with this hardware, and we mm. will be keeping it. Good group it. of good guys, too. That yeah. I, I watched a video they did, and it's a very enjoyable group of guys. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to link to a few of their videos in the description, and I think they might link to them from their site, too. But they, mm -hmm. they explain all this stuff in great depth. Mm -hmm. They talk a ton about how Wi-Fi works and how to make it work for you, how to map things out, all, those, all the different tools that we've talked about. This is just, like, very basic stuff. Go, mm -hmm. go check that stuff out.